Okay, I have a major truth bomb for you. Your dog's wagging tail doesn't necessarily mean he's happy. In fact, many dogs wag their tails when they're uncomfortable or want to withdraw from the thing they're looking at. So then, what does a wagging tail mean? In this video, we're gonna be breaking down the science of tail wagging, so if you're interested in nerding out, let's get started. What's up guys, it's Jenna with Dog Liaison, where I coach you on how to enhance your dog's mental health needs. On this channel, we break down a lot of scientific research. I'm a professional trainer who works solely with dogs facing anxiety disorders. In my opinion, the most misinterpreted dog body language signal is the wagging tail. This is because so many people believe that the wagging tail means the dog is happy. And in fact, many dogs wag their tails right before they're about to aggress. That was something that we actually saw in this body language breakdown video, which you can watch a little bit later if you want. It is a common mistake, but today we are talking about the science that you can interpret your dog's body language a little bit better. Now, what I like to say is that the wagging tail just indicates arousal. It just means the dog's brain is active and alert. However, I also really love Dr. Karen B. London's description where she says, quote, the most accurate interpretation is that the dog is willing to interact. The thing is, interact is a very broad term. So true. Tail wags are super ambiguous and just because the dog wants to interact with you doesn't necessarily mean that he wants to interact with you in a positive, friendly way that you might well receive. But with the power of science, researchers were actually able to break down the tail wag into two different categories to kind of sum it up for our simple brains. In a study in 2007, researchers found that when a dog was looking at the, a person that they knew, a new stranger that they wanted to engage, or a cat, they wagged primarily to the right. Whereas when a dog was interacting with a thing that was a confrontational dog or absolutely nothing at all, they wagged primarily to the left. And the interpretation of this after the research was that this meant when the dog wanted to approach the thing, they wagged dominantly to the right, where the accent was really to the right side. If they wanted to withdraw from the thing that they were looking at, the accent was to the left. This is hypothesized to be as a result of the right and left brain hemispheres. And this is something that is actually not that unusual. We find this a lot in a lot of animals where um, their right and their left side of their brains are influencing directional patterns of their bodies. So as a result of this study and of this finding that their tails were definitely wagging in certain directions as a result of whether or not they wanted to approach the thing or withdraw from the thing, the next logical conclusion was are the dogs aware of this? So in the case of two dogs interacting, would another dog respond differently if depending on which direction, you know, dog A's B was dog A's tail was wagging. So Artel et al uh, did a study, a follow-up study in 2010 and then again Sincicelici, I'm butchering that name, in 2013, they also did a follow-up study. And what they found was that indeed, dogs do seem to behave differently when faced with a dog that is wagging either predominantly to the right, their behavior is changed. So there seems to be an understanding from dogs that you know, I'm really looking at the dog's tail to see how that other dog is feeling. Should I approach this dog? Should I fall away from this dog? I'm looking to the tail to really find that information. On top of that, there seems to be a visceral response as well. So when faced with a dog wagging to the left, which would be a, a signal that you need to withdraw, when faced with a dog that was saying, leave me alone, basically, the dog would actually have an accelerated heart rate and they would have indicate more stress when faced with that dog, which shows that they see this wag to the left as possibly a negative thing, that this is really indication that I need to leave this dog alone. Whereas if the dog was wagging to the right, then dog B's experience was that, hey, you know, this might actually be okay. I'm willing to approach and see how this goes. They were much more calm. 
Now, as far as the science is concerned, it's probably too early to say definitively that a tail wagging to the right is a positive, happy thing, and a tail wagging to the left is a negative, angry thing. It's probably too early to uh, associate that um, emotion. However, we are very clear that tails are conveying not just emotion, not just telling how the dog is feeling on the inside, but also motivation and intentionality. So it is signaling to the world around him, you know, this is what I'm going to do, or this is what I would like you to do. And of course they do this not just through their wag, but also through the speed at which they're wagging or how high they're holding their tail. And all of this information that the tail is telling us really begs the question, what about dogs that don't have tails, whether because they're short or because they're docked? In a 2007 study, researchers did find that dogs that had longer, more visible tails resulted in having other dogs more engaged. So dog B was more likely to approach dog A if they saw their long wagging tail. And if the dog's, dog's A's tail was short and docked, dog B would probably be less hesitant uh, or more hesitant to approach. And I don't want to digress too much, but this can really lead into the conversation about whether or not it's ethical to dock tails. If we know that tails are relaying so much vital information, is it really in our best interest to be cutting them off? I don't know. Answer that in the question in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on talk and docking tails in the comments. In addition to looking at the tail for information, of course, you want to look at other contextual clues. So here are some things that you want to look for when you're looking at a wagging dog to really see, should I approach or should I stay away? First of all, look at the hips. Dogs that are wagging in a happily, you know, excited way are usually going to move their hips. I call this hula hips, and it usually has a more fluid wag. You also want to look at the height of the tail. I think that for most dogs, for most breeds of dogs, you generally want to look at the tail, at, see if it's at level height. So you want to see down the spine, does the tail easily flow right off? Is it too high or too low? If it's too high or too low, that can indicate that A, if the dog's tail is too high, that's probably showing a little bit more confidence. Now it's up to you to interpret whether or not that confidence is in your best interest or not. <laughs> um, but if the tail is down low, that that's probably indicating the dog is more sensitive or cautious or submissive. And again, that's up to you to interpret whether or not you really want to approach a submissive dog. And the reason is, is because when you have a tail that is super high and confident or a dog that is tucking their tail super low, that is where you are most likely to get those extreme emotions that we were talking about in last week's video right here where we talk about all about socializing dogs. So if you haven't checked that video out, make sure you do that now. In general, it's probably a little bit unreasonable to look exclusively at the tail and think that the tail alone is going to tell you what the dog is thinking. You probably need other body movements and other dog body language to understand that. So for a deep dive on all things dog body language, make sure you check out this playlist that has several videos that talk about these things. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit that like button. Consider subscribing for more nerdy content all about science of dogs. And if you do subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified when I drop a new video. Just so you know, there's a free list of 50 enrichment activities you can do with your dog in the description box. Check it out.